Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. This is the Rangers Review morning briefing for Friday, the 15th of July. I'm joined by Johnny McFarlane and Joshua Barry. How are we doing, boys? Good, mate. Good. Delight to be on the three of us. First thing in a while. Certainly yeah. is a full squad. Yeah, it is a full squad. Sorry we're a little bit late. It's just, there's a lot happening this morning, Derek. I don't, yeah. know, if you've, I don't know if you've noticed. There is a lot happening. I feel like I'm on the, the BBC breaking news channel, but um, lots of Rangers news to talk about. Before we do that, though, folks, uh, as always, remember, just a wee bit of housekeeping, as you can see, um, we are sponsored by the One Football app. It is your one-stop shop for all your footballing needs. You can keep abreast of all the latest goings on from Ibrox. You can get notifications to your phone with signing news and uh, upcoming matches, you can keep abreast of all that's going on in Scottish football. And also, if you have a team, team down south, um, there's lots of uh, information on there from the English Premier League Championship, League One and League Two, and also uh, across the pond, uh, all the big European competitions. The good news is it's totally free, so it won't cost you a penny, and it's available to iPhone and Android users. Um, a lot of people downloading it and saying great things, so get it downloaded, folks. And also, as you can see, the little ticker below, we've got a great offer on the site just now. If you subscribe to the Rangers Review, you get two months for just £2, so a pound a month. It really is cracking value. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, OK, let's talk Rangers, guys. Um, well, before we do that, I um, just wanted to clear something up. Yesterday, um, there was a uh, noticed... Uh, <laughs> Uh, a, a post on a, a Rangers supporting Facebook page suggesting ourselves and the Daily Record were the same company. Um, it, we quickly refuted that. Folks, just if, if you're in any way uh, not aware of uh, who we are, we are in no way affiliated to the Daily Record. Um, we are owned by NewsQuest. They are owned by Reach PLC. Um, we're one of Rangers' official media partners, and we are in no way affiliated uh, to the Daily Record. So uh, the post has now been taken down. Uh, it was corrected, um, but it's just to put it out there, folks, if you're, if you're maybe um, not sure of who we are, um, we are not the Daily Record. Um, Johnny, yeah, you want to dive in? Yeah, we'd normally not even bring up something as stupid as this, yeah. um, but we've had a number of questions about it on our YouTube comments area on the channel, and we've had tweets about it as well. So... Unfortunately, the site that put it up, who has apologised um, for the mistake made by one of their ad admins, um, has got 28,000 followers. So it's not ideal. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a mistake, a genuine mistake made by somebody who got himself confused. And uh, yeah, we, we just wanted to clear that up. Uh, that we, we, we were not affiliated with the Daily Record. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. OK, let's move on to uh, why people are tuning in. And it's because... There seems to be some developments with regards to incomings and outgoings at Rangers. The news uh, broke yesterday, Calvin Bassey attracting the attention of Brighton and Ajax in the Eredivisie. Uh, at this uh, stage in time, we believe that the, both those clubs have been joined at the bidding table uh, by teams across Europe. Um, Joshua, you've got an update for us with regards to Calvin Bassey. Uh, can you fill us in on... Uh, where we're at. Yeah, well, I'm just going to have my article in front of me, Derek, because it's been a busy morning already and I'm worried I'll forget some key information. But as you say, um, this kind of started to to break yesterday. But from what we understand, um, Ajax and Brighton, both clubs who uh, have a real serious interest in buying Calvin Bassey from Rangers. Now, I think it's important to mention, Derek, that both Ajax and Brighton are set to sell left-sided kind of centre-back slash left-backs. So, Lisandro Martinez from Ajax, um, who can play both positions as a left-footer. He looks like he's off to Man United for about £50 million. And Mark uh, Cucurella, who Brighton only signed last season, looks like he's going to Manchester City with maybe Zinchenko and going to Arsenal. So, you, you, it, it kind of fits the um, fits the mould, if you will, of why they'd be in for a player um, like Bassey. Um, I, th I think the key thing to note is that Rangers won't entertain bids in uh, that aren't in excess of £20 million. So I think for supporters that don't want to lose Bassey, getting a substantial fee would certainly soften the blow. And when you look at the 300000 Rangers paid for him just two seasons ago to get north of £20 million from him would, would be 
you know, really, really significant. Um, I think it might go even higher than that. Um, and I think one of the things that will, I guess, determine the eventual fee, Derek, is that it's not only Brighton and Ajax that are interested. There's other clubs in the Premier League uh, elsewhere around Europe. Um, and I, I guess what the club will probably hope from their point of view is the more interest, the better. You know, we've we've been seeing with with um, Barcelona, they were very keen to get Chelsea involved in the bidding war for, for Frankie de Jong, weren't they? Because obviously then that kind of increases the player's stock. They can maybe bounce the clubs off one another. And for Rangers, the more clubs that are interested, the better. But yeah, no, north of, of £20 million, it's a lot of money. Um, but the interest is very concrete and that's kind of moved in, in the last day. So looks like uh, Calvin Bassey will be the, the subject of some some serious a serious bid with some serious money behind it. And it will be interesting to, to kind of see what happens from here. Yeah, uh, good morning to David Kerr, who joins us from Corfu, uh, enjoying the sunshine over there. Thanks for uh, tuning in, David. Um, Johnny, um, this is what Rangers want, isn't it? A, a bidding war, I think. I mean, I mean... Everyone wants Calvin Bassey to be a Rangers player uh, for as long as possible, but um, I think everyone's realistic. Um, his performances last season were such that some of the best clubs uh, on the continent and down south are interested in his services now. Uh, and the more clubs that are uh, wanting to buy him, surely that's that, that benefits Rangers uh, and he's going to go for a record fee. There's no doubt about it. No, it's the dream scenario, Derek. It's yeah. the scenario that everyone would have hoped for. If Calvin Bassey had to go, this is how you would want him to go, with big clubs from big leagues, with big money in their pockets, coming in for the player. Because that means Rangers are going to get serious bang for their buck. And of course, what, can, what that can then trigger is actually what's really, really exciting. Because if Rangers are to get a deal, say, for example... If they're to get their valuation, which is around 25 million in terms of the package, then you have opened up the door to go out and spend some big money. Now, I don't think for a second that Stuart Robertson's going to give Giovanni Van Bronckhorst 25 million to go and spend on the squad, but he yeah. might give him eight, he might give him 10. Um, you've got to understand, I think, that the club uses this money to fund itself. That's part yeah. of the model. So we'd expect to see that money reinvested into the running of the club, whether that be through the completion of Edmondson House or it's um, it's continuing the work that we know is going on at the training ground in terms of rejuvenating and revitalising that as a truly elite standard uh, training centre or if it's continuing the work that goes on at Ibrox to bring it back up to the standard that it's always been <clears throat> before the, the rot of 2012 set in and years of underinvestment. So so that's where the kind of money could be used. Um, and, and I think it would be very, very exciting. I, for one, as much as I love Calvin Bassey, Derek, and I think he's an unbelievably good player, and I'd yeah. really, really like to see him stay at Ibrox and develop as a player. I think the kind of, the kind of money you're talking about... <laughs> I it's, it's equally as exciting to imagine what the club could do with that. I don't know what you two think. Yeah, well, it's, it's an interesting question, Johnny. Um, there was a comment coming in saying, how much do you think that uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst will get to spend of, of said money? Um, it's not a case of simply, Joshua, um, say, for example, you get £25 million, you've got £25 million there to spend on a player. You need to factor in wages and what have you. Um, and you'd imagine... Uh, the club will want to bank some away. Um, but there will be a substantial amount of money, you'd imagine, there to reinvest in the squad. Yeah, of course, the squad obviously has to get better regardless of of, of uh, the transfers that go out. And as much as, you know, people will want to keep Bassey, if, if, you know, 25 million is coming for Calvin Bassey, would, you know, not that it could not go higher than that, but that is such a large sum for a player that, you know, it must be repeated, came in the door for £300,000. Um I think Rangers transfer window this summer, it's not a case of they've got a you know completely settled squad. They know no one's gonna go, they've got X amount of money and they can they can spend on that. You know, as we discussed yesterday, Derek, you've got to consider the possibilities of Champions League money. You've got to consider what's gonna happen with Kent and Morelos. As we've seen with the Rebo, he's obviously moved on. Players like Bassi could go. So I think it's moving parts all the time, and that's probably quite 
difficult to do business with him because I guess your targets could change. I guess your expectations of who you can bring into the club uh, can change. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll speak about him at the moment, but we understand that, that Tillman, R Rangers pushing pretty hard to get Tillman uh, in, into the club, obviously quite a highly rated player from Bayern Munich. Um, so I think you'll, you'll have players like you know him and Matondo, who regardless of whether you've got X amount of money, they represent really exciting transfers that for the value you can get them makes complete sense. Same with someone like Antonio Cholak. But I guess depending on if someone like Bassi goes or if Rangers get Champions League money, that's a, that is a lot of money coming into the club that, that will be reinvested. So um, it's, it's it's busy. Uh, it's, it's interesting. And um, yeah, I expect there to be a lot more kind of busy mornings on here discussing ingoings and, and, and outgoings simply because of all the moving parts of this window. Yeah, it seems to have been getting ramped up in the last 24 hours. Uh, just to touch on this point from uh, Ready Teddy Bear, uh, Johnny, he said that I need kitchen cutlery in the background. This is obviously um, from uh, our uh, presser we did with uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst uh, recently at the club's uh, hotel in Portugal. Now, let me clear this up. Uh, it was about 9 million degrees outside in the shade. Um, I was we're hoping to do it outside uh, by the poolside, however, um, you've got to go with the wishes of the Rangers manager. He was sweltering. He's been out training with uh, the side uh, in, uh, in the sunshine all morning. Uh, he wanted to do it inside. Uh, the kitchen staff and the hotel staff were told that there was a press conference taking place. However, they then decided to uh, make as much noise as possible, uh, despite being told. There's also... Uh, uh, music playing in the background, which we're told to, to put off as well, but it took a wee while. So, um, yeah, sometimes you're at the mercy of, of the club with regards to this. You just need to film as and when. So uh, we do apologise for the background noise uh, from that that press conference, folks. But we, in terms of the, the the sound level and the noise, I've seen a few comments with regards to that. We are investing, aren't we, Johnny, in uh, some high-tech equipment as well, just to bring you uh, the best quality interviews and the best footage as we possibly can. Yeah, we've gone out and purchased some um, road mics, so that should make a huge difference going forward. There isn't a lot you can do when a guy seems to be deliberately banging, clattering yeah. and throwing cutlery about because he's annoyed that you've asked him to turn his music off. Um, but uh, certainly with that kind of, with that kind of uh, equipment, you can guarantee a little bit better standard. So apologies for that. We were aware of it, but we just thought we'd be better chucking out the interviews because you can still obviously hear what's being said. It's just a bit frustrating at certain points with regard yeah. to the guys doing that in the background. But um, hopefully you got a fair bit of insight from these interviews because there was absolutely tons to talk about that came out of uh, the discussions Derek had alongside the other uh, guys that were there with Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Um, and certainly I don't think it was anywhere near as bad with uh, the Cholak interview or the Goldson interview. Um, so, so yeah, just to make people aware on that, um, Josh, you're getting a lot of comments about your hair again, mate. Um, yeah, I did that see that. Oh, yeah. uh, Why? Your hair is glorious, Josh, from a uh, good friend of the show, Aldo. <laughs> what, what's, what's this? I'm actually, Aldo, I'm actually getting it cut today. So this is a bit of a, it's, it's a bit all over the place, but. Um, what are you getting, a number one? Well, I just go in and normally and say the usual, but I was discussing with, um, my better half today, I was saying. Should I do something a bit different? You know, my bro my younger brother actually has just got. A, I don't know if you've seen that, seen this trend. And I know we're going very off course in a serious transfer podcast, but he's just got the. Have you seen the mullet? The, the new mullets with the shave down the side and the long the back. Josh, don't don't mess with I'm, I'm not gonna. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. But um, he's gone for that. So um, th there's a high bar for me to live up to something as exciting as exciting. I've as had that. I've had this ha same haircut for about thirty eight years. <laughs> Don't yeah. mess with it. Get Steven, something that works for you. Don't mess yeah, with yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. nice. Well, so, yeah. sorry, Aldo. It's, it's sorry, Aldo, for looking a bit disreveled. But as I say, we've been up and at it, chasing up and, and checking what's happening. A busy, busy morning in the world of Rangers. Yep. Yeah. Tillman, Derek, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let, let's, let's move on. Yeah, that's why people are tuning in. Right, okay. Malik Tillman, Bayern Munich youngster, 20-year-old American international. Uh, he's featured four times, I believe, I think. It's a handful of occasions for... Uh, the Bundesliga champions. Now, we believe uh, at this uh, point in time that he will be a Rangers player by close of day today on a loan deal. Um, a lot of comments coming in. Uh, i seen a few reports saying there would be an option to buy. Uh, Joshua, 
you've got the latest with regards to Malik Tillman. Where do we stand on this and how excited are you that a player of this calibre is coming in uh, to Ibrox? Yeah, well, we said, I think it was a couple of days ago, Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in our newsletter that we were uh, kind of writing about this and Rangers' interest in Tillman um, wasn't clear then if it was definitely going to happen. I think it's still not 100% at the moment purely because there's such interest from, from down south in Tillman. You know, this is a player who is at Bayern Munich for a reason, um, is an international player for a reason, and... Um, represents an, an, an interesting deal for clubs if they can get him in on loan. Rangers will hope, I think, to get him in with a loan to buy option. Obviously, that gives you the luxury of if he does go and have a fantastic season, um, you're not negotiating off, I guess, uh, that platform next season. You're negotiating off um, the, the, the current play, as it were, at the moment. Uh, but from what I understand, Rangers pretty confident in, in getting Tillman in. Um, could be announced as early as today. And... I think he would be a really exciting signing. I think, you know, you look at a loan deal and, and Ahmad Diallo maybe didn't work for a number of reasons, one of which uh, you could argue was was uh, physically the, the state of the Scottish Premiership is is robust. You know, we've seen that and I think it was a Dundee United game at the end of the season where Diallo came off the bench at halftime and he was put in the air three times by the 60-minute mark, although I think he adjusted to that by the end of his loan spell. Um, but I think Tillman, the, the way he carries the ball, his strength on the ball would, would make him quite immediately suitable. I think he could fill in that number 10 position, certainly give Rangers some more depth there. Um, and he's an exciting player. So if the club could get him in with a loan to buy option, I think it's got the potential to be a, a really, really uh, good bit of business. But um, we'll keep you updated on that throughout the day if, if and when there's any developments. And um, yeah, bring that to everyone, obviously. Yeah, Johnny, for me, I'm quite excited by uh, this lad. Uh, I've got to admit, I've not seen him much. Uh, it was, isn't a player that that's, uh, I was well aware of before Rangers' interest, but uh, on paper, he looks like a, a right good player. He's got the physicality for me, which which, which I'm quite excited about. It looks like he can handle himself. Um, anyone that comes through at Bayern Munich must have something about him. Where do you stand on this? I think this is a really exciting transfer. I think the important thing people need to be aware of is just how big a coup this would be to get a guy in from Bayern Munich who is considered really one of their key young talents and has been for quite a while now. I, f I understand that he's quite frustrated with a lack of first-team football in Bayern. I mean, I think he's only made four appearances. He has played in a Champions League game. I think he came on as a substitute against Barcelona in December last year. But he's not played a lot of football. And I think at 20 and being German, these kids understand the importance of, of getting games in. So I think he will be clear that he needs to go to develop himself, whether it be on loan or permanently. Certainly, certainly going to be the case that it would be a loan to Rangers. And as Josh says, you know, that, that loan to buy clause would be a massive one to add in because if he comes in is, and performs really well, then all of a sudden you're holding all the aces. But we'll see whether whether that pans out or not. Um, because that, that would that would add another sheen of of uh excellence to this deal. But certainly a very, very exciting kid, powerful. Really, one of these guys that's in the um, the Van Bronckhorst mold, physically strong, and you can see that's what Van Bronckhorst is wanting to do. I think Josh, you've got a piece that's in the that's cooking in the oven at the moment about the sort of the process and the methodology and the uh, philosophy of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, and I think it's undoubted that, that one of the key things that he's looking for is power and physicality in every area of the pitch, and I think Tillman is the ultimate representation of this really, isn't he? Yeah, well, I th both on and off the ball, Van Bronckhorst likes players that are strong and physical because obviously if you're going to be isolated um, 1v1 um, against your, your opposition man and you've not got many players around you, you need to be able to handle yourself physically. You look, for example, at the kind of um, centre points of Van Bronckhorst's team, particularly in Europe, and that was Lundström and, and Bassey, both players who... Um, a real physical specimens, aren't they? Can can get um, can dominate in their duels pretty quick. Lundstrom's quite deceivingly quick when he opens up. 
uh, if you look at the, the players they've kind of replaced in the starting 11 from the season before, Stephen Davis and, and Philip Holander at left centre back are players that are perhaps more protected in, the, in Gerard's kind of narrower system, didn't have as much ground to cover, had more support around them. Um, so very much so. So I, I think you can see with with Cholak, with Lawrence, with Matondo, um, with Suter, um, and now with Tillman, if that does indeed happen, that is very much got a... It, the, the phrase I've kind of used is being recalibrated the squad towards Van Bronckhorst. You know, the sporting director model allows Rangers to build beyond managers, and you've got players like Morelos and Ken and Tavernier and Goldson who can adapt to different styles. But then within a squad, obviously, you have players like Rufin Hadji who came in to play that right-sided number 10 position. That's not there any, anymore. So you need to recalibrate certain positions. You look at the midfield, it's still a bit bottom-heavy for me. It still needs players in the, the attacking midfield role, which was shown in our depth chart that we put on social media yesterday. And, and I think certainly so far this window, you can see it's, it has been recalibrated towards what Van Bronckhorst wants from the squad. This is an interesting point from uh, James Graham. He uh, says, do you think uh, Roy Mackay had any input in this deal with Tillman? Interesting point because, of course, Good he's point. revered it at Bayern Munich. I'd imagine he, he would have had a bit of input, uh, Johnny. It's, uh, uh, it makes sense, you'd imagine. And you, people forget this about the uh, how um, world-renowned the Rangers coaching staff is. Giovanni van Bronckhorst, of course, captain Holland to... World Cup final, of course, he played for Barcelona, won the Champions League, played for some of the best clubs on the planet. Uh, Mackay, of course, as well, played for Holland so many times. Bayern Munich played in Spain for long spells uh, as well, and, and in Holland. The pooling power of these guys must uh, add weight to when you're trying to attract players to the club. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, Derek, when you were, you were speaking to Giovanni van Bronckhorst over in Portugal, and you said to him, uh, you know, have you watched the Europa League final back? And he said, I haven't watched the World Cup final back. And yeah. and that just really showed you that Rangers have a big name manager with big ambitions. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the guy that um, that's played <laughs> and captained a team to a World Cup final, uh, it really says it all. And, you know, if, if Giovanni van Bronckhorst has been through that and can bounce back from that, then I don't think there's any doubt that he will be a very good man to be at the forefront of helping the players at Rangers bounce back from the Europa League final. There's nothing bigger than 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 you know taking your country to a World Cup final and being the captain. Yeah. Um, you know, we, it's absolutely enormous. And to have done that and to have come through that and pr presumably the heartbreak that, that that came from that will help him get over this one and uh, help the players, I'm sure, as well because he'll have been through. The, the hard the hard elements of that psychologically and 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 hopefully we don't see any kind of a a negative bounce back from last season on that I mean that's something to be honest guys that I've been a little bit concerned about um you know I always remember in 2008 when Rangers reached the uh, Europe uh, the oh, then the Cup final yeah the next season everyone was thinking that they're going to go and do really well in the Champions League they've got that team they've got that way of playing and of course, they were put out by Kaunas in the early rounds. And everyone said at the time, look, the players just, they weren't recovered psychologically. And they actually went on to have a good season in terms of domestically. Um, and, and we've seen this happen before when Rangers have had a very good season. And then the next season, it's gone slightly bad. I think 1993, obviously. Rescue Sophia, wasn't it? The, the situation with um, Marseille when they, they'd been involved in, in kind of match fixing throughout that season and had won the Champions League. Um, and Rangers had pushed them so, so close. I think very unlucky not to reach the final that year. And then the next season, I think, as you say, Derek, went out to Levski, Sofia. So I've seen that happen before, and, and you really don't want to repeat yeah. the mistakes of the past. So I think having Gio in there as someone who's got experience of it is a really, really important element. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. Um, some, uh, so many comments and questions coming in, folks. I'll try and get to a few of them. Uh, just going back to Bassi, um, Chat, uh, comment here, uh, Joshua from George Higgins. He says, uh, excellent chat, guys. If Bassi goes, then we need a left-back and a centre-back, in his opinion. Uh, thoughts? Do you think we just need to bring someone in if, if Bassi goes? Oh, un undoubtedly. I mean, again, we discussed this yesterday, Derek. I didn't think it would, we'd maybe be talking about it again so soon, but we said, you know, if Bassi were to go, where does it leave the defence? Because... You know, I don't think it's dead set that Borna Barisic is first choice left back next season. 
So you've got to consider the left back position. But then also, if you look at the centre back options, you know, Suter, uh, Katic, Goldson, Simpson, Hollander, King, I think that's everyone I've got, Bassi. There, there's no one that can play that role that Bassi's done, you know, for example, in the Scottish Cup uh, Old Firm semi final, uh, the, the man marking job on, on Rogic, that kind of physical man for man. Um, option of a, of a centre-back stepping into midfield. No, no one can do that like Bassey, so I think you've got to replicate that because obviously Van Bronckhorst is so kind of so set on, well, maybe not restricted by it, but I think that's certainly what he favours and you can see how beneficial it's been to have a player like Bassey. You're not going to be able to go and replace Bassey, I don't think, him um, unless you pay a lot of money for him simply because his, his rise has been so astronomical. But also what he gives you, I mean, that Europa League performance is uh, the only uh, bits I've watched back from the final, having having been there working on it, is a compilation of Bassi's. Uh, yeah, the Bassi montage. Yeah, that's all I've seen. Also, it's incredible, and it, it is genuinely incredible, and 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 that's why you know he's going to go for a lot of money, and why there is such substantial interest from teams as big as Ajax, and and uh, obviously a team like Brighton who are kind of encroaching on the the top ten, top eight in the Premier League. Um, but you absolutely need to replace that. So, and this is why when we're talking about the transfer market, we're saying so much can change because yesterday Rangers' defensive options are settled. They've got Bassi who can play that aggressive centre back role, but it can also play left back at other points in the season. Now, if Bassi goes, you think the injury uh, kind of history of the likes of Hellander and Suter isn't great. You've only got one left back. You've probably not got players a player who can play that position that Van Bronckhorst really likes. So moving parts, I expect that Ross Wilson is having one of his uh, busier summers in his professional career. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, Blair, I think, just joined us here. Um, we touched on this at the start of the show, yeah. Uh, he says, uh, with regards to the Daily Record, yeah, we've, uh, we're not uh, the Daily Record, just to cl clarify that, um, Blair. Um, so many other comments coming in. This... <laughs> This was <laughs> uh, the Rangers transfer rumor mill is is uh, amusing at times. Millerman says uh, Doron uh, Leidner uh, is really left back. Um, now I think this this was sparked because he followed Rangers on Instagram and his agent did um, before subsequently uh, unfollowing. I'm led to believe. Um, <laughs> you know you know how these things start. Um, I'm not too sure if you've seen anything of, of, of him, Joshua. He, it was a name yeah. that was that was mentioned yesterday. As a, a number of names, um, there was a Romanian boy as well. I was uh, uh, messaged by a Romanian journalist the other day there um, about a player that Rangers apparently had interest in. But uh, it looks like it's come from one of our <laughs> writers, Patrick Kasky, scouting articles. <laughs> so... <laughs> so uh, read of that what you will. But listen, it's, it's a funny season. Whole sorts of names been linked to, to the club, um, and uh, not you'll find a vast amount uh, don't come to fruition, um, such as Rangers transfer business at the moment and keeping things in house, which is uh, how, how you want things. Uh, Graham Mitchell makes a point here: Is our squad too big? Now this ties in with uh, some report uh, articles we've got on the website uh, this morning, Johnny. Um, I think it's in the piece that we put out yesterday from Joshua, it's with the graphic showing that the Rangers' first team squad it is, for me, a bit heavy. Um, players need to be moved on. For me, defensively, I know we've touched, said that a replacement has to come in for Bassi should he leave, but I think there are possibly two uh, defensive options that need to be moved on. Uh, and in midfield, centrally, it's also heavy. Uh, and for good at players' careers, You've got to think that Ross Wilson uh, will be busy trying to uh, get probably get players new clubs. You'd imagine. Yeah, I, I think so, Derek. Um, what I would say is that there's a few players that need to be that need to be thinking about their future yeah. going forward. I think we, we've already discussed them. Josh's piece is absolutely excellent. I'd recommend anyone go to that. And Josh, if you could if you could put that into the the comments, thing that would be good. Um, because I know that that caused a lot of uh, discussion on social media yesterday, especially the graphic we had showing the um, the kind of depth of each position. I mean, for me, the thing about the, the squad is Rangers' transfer business so far and Ross Wilson's work um, has addressed the key thing that I was worried about. And I'd be interested to know what people think in the comments about this, because... We've been banging on and on and on for literally weeks and weeks and weeks about a lack of goals in Rangers' team. 
I first probably identified this, and I've been talking about this since October, November. Yeah, it's just been such a big element of Rangers' overall play, especially domestically. And to have signed Cholak, who is a killer in the box, who scores one in every two games, to have signed Lawrence, who's a player who can finish from outside the box, who is tricky, who's got goals in him from wide areas. And if you add Matondo into that, who who had a decent scoring record last season, especially compared with Rangers wingers, it feels to me like that should have solved that domestic goal scoring issue. And now it's just a case of reacting to various little tweaks in the squad. Obviously, you need a box-to-box midfielder. Um, hopefully, Tillman will, will represent that when it gets over the line, as we expect it to do later on in the day. But almost now you feel that Rangers are in a really, really good place regardless of what happens. Obviously, if more big names leave, if, if Calvin Bassey does indeed go it then opens up a, a can of worms in terms of replacements and, and whatnot. But looking at the squad, I mean, I wouldn't be really disappointed to see Borna Barisic come back in as first choice left back and two centre backs of Suter and, and Goldson, which I mean, I don't think you guys would be. That's that's a good defence for me. Um, I, I think I think the like, looking at that graphic yesterday, you know, this is aside from Tillman and aside obviously from the fact that based on the news about Bassi today, more players will come in. Does that team definitely win the league? Um, and I think the areas, as Johnny mentions, Rangers have addressed in terms of goals, which has been really important. I think Matondo obviously will come in and be a starter and I think he'll be a really good player for Rangers. But that attacking midfield depth, again, prior to this, this Tillman news, I don't think that was sufficient for a season. Also, I think a player that, and a lot of people have seen, we're saying this on on Twitter, I still think Rangers maybe need a player from deep midfield who's a real creator. I know they've got Stephen Davis, but given his age, I think you've got to kind of asterisk him in the conversation. You know, when Rangers play uh, whoever at home, um, I think it's important that they have someone at the the bottom of midfield who can open them up. And if you look at, for example, Lundstrom, Jack or, or Kamara, they all have different attributes and credentials and things they bring, but would you want either of them always as your player from deep midfield who's trying to be the the kind of creator? I don't know. Maybe, again, that's like the type of signing you're looking at dependent on the Champions League, obviously, last season with with, a, with a Veerman. That was probably a, kind of a similar conversation. But it's getting there, and the big thing is goals. You know, Lawrence scored... What, how many goals was it for Derby last season? Certainly double figures. You look at Cholak's last season in Malmo, very impressive, as Johnny says. And Matondo got nine goals in 26 games in Belgium last season. And as we keep saying, take, took more shots than crosses, which I just think is a line that kind of demonstrates the type of player he is. He's, he's direct, he wants to get goals. Um, so you're certainly improving the goal threat in that area. And that was what Rangers needed to do. And, they, and they've done it without spending all that much money. I guess now it's about building that squad and if Bassi goes, if the Champions League money is, is afforded, then it's when you add real quality instead of uh, quantity in, in those areas we've talked about. Yeah. Okay, folks, I think that'll do. Is there just a headline news in case you're joining us late? Um, Brighton and Ajax uh, seriously interested uh, in Calvin Bassi. There's a host of other clubs across the continent who are also uh, reporting interest uh, in them, uh, Rangers uh, uh, will be looking to sell for a, a record-breaking fee, upwards of, of £20 million. Um, so watch this space with regards to that. In terms of incomings, uh, Malik Tillman from Bayern Munich uh, should be uh, confirmed as a, a Rangers player, we believe, on loan initially uh, later on today. So keep your eyes peeled on the Rangers review site and on our social media channels. Uh, for all the latest transfer news. That'll do us there. Um, just a reminder as well, we've got that offer on the website just now. So many of you taking advantage of it, so thank you. Uh, it's just £2 for two months' worth of coverage. It's an absolute giveaway. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. I'll be in Blackpool tomorrow, so if you see me on the promenade, come over and have a chat uh, and safe journey to everyone heading down to Bloomfield Road tomorrow. But uh, until then... Uh, Enjoy your weekend and we'll speak to you again on Monday.